report on this computer. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there we go. Okay, so um, I was just, I had a few things to start with, and then um, I was going to go through and update a package uh, for one agency for using the files that um, were sent out yesterday. And then um, I think we can just go from there. Um, so one thing, uh, what does reconciled mean for this package? Um, I'm just going to go through it. Reconciled, we need to have all of these reconciliations here. And can you go, can you see my computer? Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, all these should be zero or we say zero, but it should be pretty close to it. It's hard to put a number on it for materiality. I mean, I guess, you know, like going forward, we can look at that and try to figure out something. But, you know, for the most part, once this gets rolling, there really shouldn't be any variance that's there. You know, let's just um, post these things according to the payment schedules and um, we should be okay. But anyway, reconciled means pretty much zero here. Um, there's one more column over here that this one needs to also be zero. Your expenditure reconciliation, this column here, the formula um, column with the reconciliation between the payment schedule and the um, expense or the payment schedule, which is really your book of record when it comes to leases instead of skis, that needs to be reconciled with uh, the BW expense GL. So your book of record, this worksheet needs to be reconciled to the GL skis. So um, this agency, we see a little bit of a variance here and I saw this earlier and this was what they submitted um, in March and down here, there's a nice little note that says the variance is not zero, but they will make it up on the next payment. So that's perfect. A lot of, we, we got a lot of questions on this checklist. Um, and really the easiest way to, to answer these kinds of questions is to put comments out here like this, because it's really, well, the first thing I'm gonna look at is the lease roll forward. And, um, but then the checklist to see if there were any questions or issues or whatever, but that's, when it comes to a spreadsheet, especially like this, it's easier just to look at it and think through it and then answer a question. So um, anyway, so reconciled is, is we need, the expenditure reconciliation, basically zero here. Um, at the end of the year, it should be zero. The um, payment schedule, we need the assets to be reconciled. And maybe I can figure out, well, there is a reconciliation on the roll forward that checks this too, I think. But anyway, if not, then we can build it in later on or something. But um, this variance for the assets, it needs to be zero also. So your assets and skis need to match your assets, you, the sum of your principal payments. And um, on this one, I noticed that there was a outage down here and I'm like, not even 60, they wouldn't do that, but, and they did not, of course. So they, um, noted here that this was a um, lease with Presidio that was considered a capital lease in previous years. So that asset has already started depreciating and it was, it was correct in, when it was at the um, conception of the lease. So um, we just noted that here. But um, so reconciled is your assets match the sum of your principal payments, your reconciliation, Column H should be zero. And, you know, we don't talk a lot about this bottom section down here, but, you know, a negative number. None of this should be negative. You don't have negative expenditures. Um, that's one thing to look for. And we, I haven't looked at these expenses down here, the, the excluded ones or this what we're expensing and the contingent and that kind of thing. But you should really take a look at it. And you know, this is our um, our expenses here. You know, look at do the drop down and choose contingent. And does it make sense that it's all Pollock? So I would believe that. And I don't know, short term or interagency, that's a good one. That should all be, you know, another agency postage should be something that makes sense with postage machines. Um but just your lease roll floor, that's your main thing. Let's make sure that all of these are zero. Um, the checklist tab needs to be done. Um, 
And all of this needs to happen with every time this package is submitted. And we had the pre year end package submission requirement because, as you can see, this is pretty complicated. It's, you know, it's complicated to, you know, have it set up and just wrap your head around it and everything. But, you know, it's, it's just fill in the blank and, you know, put an X in the box when it really, when it comes down to it. But if, if this is not in order and the assets are not correct and all that stuff, if we had to put that on reporting packages and, um, I'm sorry, I just saw that um, from Denise, I'll come back to it. But if we waited until the, after the, the end of the year, it would be incredibly tough to, you know, all the asset changes and if the GLs weren't right and all that kind of stuff. So we wanted it, you know, set up, you know, so we hopefully catch most of the things and before year end, before we're all busy. And then um, the next due date is July 22nd. And that was on purpose because that is also the last day that you can create a journal entry or post a journal entry. Kelly, so, you, you're getting a comment that asks you to go back and reference the column and row ranges that need to be zero or close to zero and um, asking you to scroll down, uh, slow down when you're scrolling. Oh, okay. Yeah, I tend to move a little fast. <laughs> so could you go back and reference that? That is the reconciliation. Um, so um, just uh, go back and reference the column and row ranges that need to be zero for the reconciliation. And that's here. These. So this should 100% be zero and any outages should be up here. Otherwise there needs to be, either you have documents that um, have been paid, but they're not on the payment schedule or maybe your documents, um, your payments included tax where your payment schedule did not, that would make this number not zero, but Hopefully, like this schedule right here, this one has the where the X is looking for that X, correct? Yes. So, um, I mean, I can go to that too. So, the expenditure reconcil reconciliation here, column D, that is looking at the payment schedule and the fiscal year. So, for any for that GL account and for this fiscal year is summing that amount. So these are the total payments that will be made to lease expense in fiscal year 22. This next column is looking at the GL account only because we only have one fiscal year and the BDW expense report. So it's just summing it. This is the sum of everything paid to IT copiers principal or copier's principle. Um, column uh, G is looking at the GL account, the fiscal year, and that X on the payment schedule. So if we go over here to the payment schedule, let's scroll up to the top. And um, so it's gonna sum the principal amount for anything that hits this GL account and where there's also an X here. So this is what I'm saying like, for the most part, once your um, payment schedules, amortization schedules are set up right, and all your leases are listed here, once a month, you can just simply just run your report and put X's here. And then your reconciliation should be zero throughout if you've made your payments correctly. And um, the expense tab, I'm not sure where there's an issue here. But, uh, let's see. Okay, so the July 22nd, the next time this package is due, um, you can turn this package in, I guess, as early as July 15th um, or whenever all your payments have posted. Uh, the following day when you can run the BW reports, but I mean, it can be uh, submitted as early as then and, and highly encouraged. Um, so we have the July 22nd and because of the, the last day to do journal entries and we just need to have it 
the expenditures in line with the payment schedule by the cutoff there. And it will um, make like life a whole lot easier. And the reason we need them to be exact is because this debt outstanding that we see here on the lease roll forward, this is has to be booked at the CAFR level. And that's what's reported in note 13, I believe, for liabilities. So I have to make an entry that equals these amounts here. And to know how to post that by fund, which is how we report in the act for, sorry about that, let me get that straight one day, is um, it's a complicated-ish um, formula that takes what's been paid, what is posted um, in expenditures and really a percent to total for fund to post the liability. So what, we'll, what I'll do is combine all of these spreadsheets and have one master spreadsheet. I'll know what the number by um, business area to um, what our liability total will be, but I will use your expenditures to figure out what fund to post those to. So um, that is already complicated. So when I have to do a journal entry, and my journal entries are only at the CAFR level. So at ACFR level, it's high level and you lose the identity of what agency that is for. So, um, and, and we can't post at the funds that y'all can. Well, yes, actually we can't start about that. But anyway, so it's just much easier when the expenditures are correct. Um, and then the reason why we have to submit it yet again is because of the asset portion of this. So the only thing that you will have to update after um, the July 22nd um, posting, as long as you captured all of your expenditures and nothing else has hit your books, but it shouldn't have because it's closed, right? But um, the assets, um, final depreciation, and I should have asked Sherry this morning, but. I think it runs either late August or early September. Um, so once the final depreciation runs um, by skis and it's done statewide, then um, these figures here will update. So we just drop in the um, a new asset report. Redo the checklist, but I mean, it should be a 10 minute job to do that to make sure everything's still reconciled, none of the assets are wonky or anything but it shouldn't be because they should already be reconciled and they should to be correct at um, July 22nd. And um, an agency also asked another question and it's, it's, it's getting out there a little bit. And, and this is only because it's um, implementing this year, but there's a restatement required for these leases. So right now, you see that what these, these top leases that they had were existing in prior years. So there's no change here. It's our beginning balance, which would have been a better title for this one right here in column, I mean, in a row 11, column F. But if these three, these three leases were the ones that were implemented because of GASB 87. So like if there was no GASB 87 and we were just normal business, then these would stay here but it's a restatement. And this only impacts the leases that were implemented on July 1. So if you had a new lease starting even July 15th or you know August, whenever later on in the year, then it would truly be an increase. But these are not increases. The, the ones from implementation, they're a restatement of uh, you know, something we already had. So this is something that we're gonna do on our team. And after you submit, your final package, and I, I'm not sure if we'll do it for the 22nd and then give you an updated package for the 9th, I don't, I'm not really sure. But anyway, so these three numbers here, if these were all from implementation, I'm gonna have to copy and paste special here and then just manually zero these out. And then also identify that these are restatements. So, um, there, that, that is the reason, and that's going to be the last thing that has to happen before we can pile a note and get that ready. Well, that's 
that and the asset side of it. So um, the same thing has, has to happen with the leased assets. So if I um, filter this for these assets, so, and this is gonna be manual to the asset at the statewide in my capital asset and the cap, not capital, but lease work papers. These are gonna have to be zeroed out and then moved into the start column, the beginning balance, and identify that that's what that is because that the total amount of adjustment will have to be reported in the act. So um, I know that's a lot. So but. Kelly, what, what you're saying so, is um, basically the package that they're gonna submit versus the package they're gonna get back for next year, the beginning balances are gonna look different because on the leases that had a start date prior to 7-1-2021. Yes. yes. Okay. That is correct. If we have... If we had some that look like this from last year, we need to move those over? No. For this year? No. Y'all don't do anything um, and just let us do it. Because for, you know, the ones, the agencies that did have existing leases and um, the Presidio leases, Okay, so this, the, the, the balance here, you know, one of the checklist questions was, does your beginning balance in equal your ending balance? Well, you didn't have an ending balance for the most part, but some agencies did. And we, they just had to verify that with us. Um, but also that beginning balance here has to reconcile to the ending balance from last year in total then you know this whole reconciliation thing is built to look at this not taking the restatement into consideration because this year is the only year we're going to have the restatement and it's you know you you really couldn't have it both ways i think so if we would just carry on like we have been like on the last package and then once it's all said and done and final and approved then I believe it's probably it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one thing again with us and the agency saying, here's your package and here's what it's, this is good. If y'all turn in your package the way you've done it, do, keep doing it the way you're doing it now, the way you've done it for the March 31st deadline, um, that is exactly fine. What, what she is referring to, she's just trying to prep you for next year, how the beginning balance is going to look for next year. Okay, um, that makes sense. Yeah, so keep doing it. And, and all it has to do with is just an intricacy of the way GASB 87 is wanting to handle um, some of the, the leases that have old balances prior to 7 1 2021. Um, so she's just, she's just trying to prep you for that. We are going to, hand, she, uh, I say we, um, the ACFR team is going to handle this at our level. So just, just keep doing what y'all are doing so well. Um, and we will handle that, that beginning balance. Okay. Um, any more questions on that? So, um, Another question we've gotten recently is, um, I have a new lease asset, but it's not showing as leased on this um, BW asset listing tab. Um, so this, um, this first column A is driven by a lookup formula that's looking at your payment schedule. So just like, I've, broken record here, but your payment schedule is your book of record. So once you enter your asset number here, then it's going to populate here on this tab. But so if you have a new leased asset, but it's not showing as leased, then it's probably not, on, well, it's definitely not on your, I go back to probably not on your payment schedule. There's always some, or there could be, you know, like the, um, 
formula errors or something like that. But um, for the most part, your asset is not on your payment schedule. And um, another um, thing that you need and check, and this is kind of on my to-do list, is do we have an asset schedule for every leased asset? And I say every, but you know, it's, of course, there's always a but that I should be able to filter the, the asset class by anything that's got L-E-L-S-E in it for lease. So, um, but that's, that's true unless it's a, for the most part, a Presidio lease. But, you know, if you're leasing something and you will own it at the end of the lease, then you should be using a regular capital asset class. And, and I think most of the circumstances has always been Presidio so far, but um, so just keep that in mind. The Presidio ones are normally in a regular asset class and it doesn't really go for this check thing or whatever. But anyway, so if you check, filter this for just leased asset class, here are your leased assets and they're already on the payment schedule. So they're already showing as leased. But if there was one here, then you're like, do I, where's my payment schedule? Or is this really a leased asset? So I have a question. Okay. If we have leased assets, <clears throat> but they are not in an LSE asset class description. Uh-huh. And they're like, uh, not, I don't believe they're part of a Presidio contract. Is that in the wrong asset class description? It is if it's not a le an asset that you will own at the end of the lease. Okay. Okay. That, okay. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. Just wanted yeah. to clarify. Yeah. I mean, and it would be great if we could figure that out and fix it for the end of the year, but you know, that's not gonna really help me. So anyway. Kelly, one thing, if you if you can look at column F right there, and if you notice that the asset class is 15009, do you see how that asset class ends in a nine? Yeah. That's kind of telling right there, the asset class that ends in a nine, those are all leased assets. So anytime you have an asset class that ends in a nine, that's going to tell you it's for either GASB 87 or GASB 96, with the exception of Presidio leases or copy, like copier and equipment type leases. Yes. So, so you should always be choosing an asset class that ends in a nine for a leased asset. If you own it at the end of the lease. If you don't own it at the end of the lease, if you don't own it at the end of the lease, if you don't own it at the end of the lease, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Another. What? Sorry. Go ahead. Um, I was just responding to her question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could see who was talking and where they're talking, but it's, anyway. Um, so I get um, asked a lot to look at assets and skis. So um, I prefer to look at them this way because otherwise I've got to open up your file and then go figure out the asset number and is it whatever. And then, you know, look at your file, which lease are you at? What should the asset be? You know, what's the value and whatever. So, um, but it's not hard to look at them in skis. I'm just, I copied that asset number. Oops. Um, it's an ASO3. Put it in there. We know um, for sure we need to have the leasing tab um, filled out. The, the agreement number is important. This should be the same as your lease ID. And this is um, a, a really important when it comes to, you know, just being able to run reports because there's a new asset report out there that has the leasing tab pulled into it. So I should be able to run that leasing asset leasing tab report statewide and then identify the lease and the agency or, you know, make sure that there's a lease that goes along with it at, you know, one agency or whatever. So we, that's just our common factor where we can use to combine um, 
data. The depreciation areas and the lease length, that should be the same too. You know, that's one thing that I look at or basically the leasing tab and the uh, depreciation areas. And I just said that I look at the depreciation areas, but only if somebody asked me about it specifically. So I have not been checking that, but I know that the auditors have. So just because it's not built into that spreadsheet doesn't mean that you're not responsible for having good information in here. So ASO3 to look at the asset, our leasing tab um, is, you know, that's important there. That needs to be correct. And this asset values button up here, that is how we see the value of the asset. So if this, let's see, I mean, I'm sure it's right on there. We, we've already done the reconciliation and know that it's right. But let's say, you know, I have an agency this morning or yesterday, well, actually, two agencies, one this morning and one yesterday, that needed to, still needs to make um, adjustments to their assets. And they sent me an email back and said it was done. Well, I pulled up the first one and like, there's no second line here. It's like, well, no, it wasn't done. There's been no change. And then there was another one or, that sent the, the changes and, and they had duplicated it. So they, they did the change twice. So now they've got to go back and, and redo it. And um, that reminds me, so this person had asked an employee to, to make these changes for them, but there was three section of changes and the person was only supposed to make the changes in the first section. They were supposed, they had a, assets to create, assets to reduce and assets to increase. Well, the increases and the reductions were done last week. So the only thing left to do was to create the assets. So when she sent me the email and said, you know, so and so did these asset changes, I went and looked and I was like, well, the assets, anyway, whatever happened with, I, I can't remember that. But then I looked at the email that she forwarded me and it said, I did, I created the assets and did the abzons and ab bands as well. And I was like, ooh, there wasn't supposed to be any ab bands. There was supposed to be abzons because once to create an asset, you have to create the shell and then um, post an abzon to um, capitalize it, to put money or a value to it. So when I saw that on the email, I said, oh no. So I went and looked and it had been duplicated. Like, so what was done last week was done again yesterday. So we're gonna have to, you know, go back to the agency. So my point here is if you ask somebody to do something for you, it's it's kind of worth it to go back and look and see that it was done correctly before sending it here. Because I, as you can imagine, I mean, I'm just as busy as you guys are and we're getting a lot of questions. And the more or the closer we get to year in, just the more that y'all can handle on your own and, you know, just like talk about with my amongst yourselves and kind of figure it out and just review, then um, the better. We have all the training materials online or a lot of them and and we can add to it. If there's something that we don't have out there, then just let us know and we'll put it. But I get questions on how to do the abs on and the ab ban um, somewhat regularly. And it's right here. There's, you know, I think it, it's only a page or two. So, um, but Sherry at school, uh, Skis was um, so kind to put together. So there's your ab ban. And we have on here, this is how you reduce an asset you, or a partial retirement, but uh, there's that soapbox. Kelly, can I take this uh, time right now to address a couple questions that have come through? For oh us? yeah, sure. Um, okay, yeah, so uh -huh. we got a question um, asking if we should, uh, if agencies should be sending us their reconciliations on a monthly basis. And the answer is heavens no. Um, you guys need well, to. <laughs> I, no, I don't agree with that. Send it to me. <laughs> oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, um, you know, what I just did earlier this week, I finally was able to put all of the, um, combine all of these files into one master data. And, you know, we have five agencies that are outstanding, and two of those agencies. Are, um, I mean, we had, I think, 350 something as uh, leases before I added those. Well, there was like three, whatever, a couple of agencies. And uh, adding just those three, we are now up to 676. So it was, uh, you know, a bulk of the work. And the, 
I don't mind. Send it to me. That means you're doing it, you know, because we all know what it looks like when you wait until month eight to start reconciling this. So um, one thing I would encourage everyone to do is these monthly reconciliations that should be done, uh, your accounting department needs to consider them the same as you would your bank reconciliations or any other reconciliation you should do. When your auditors are going to come in, uh, if, if you do get audited and ask for reconciliations, they're going to ask for these monthly reconciliations just like they would your bank reconciliations. And I know we've gotten, um, you know, the vast majority of agencies out there um, are compliant and are doing them, but we've had a lot of agencies um, that um, are, are um, having trouble with them um, or, um, you know, there's just, there's, there's just some, a little resistance there. And we are just encouraging you guys for your, really for your own good to, to really, you really have to take this in house because these are going, these are part of your daily accounting procedures. Um, so this, this is, this is no different from a bank reconciliation that you guys need to be doing um, on some sort of timely basis. Um, another question we got is about the X lookup versus V lookup, whether or not um, there will be um, packages that will be sent uh, one versus the other. Kelly, I would say that they just need to reach out to us and let us know if we need to send an alternate package to them. Yeah, I, I should have made better notes about who is the um, who has the V look. Uh, yeah, the the older version. And I'm sorry if you don't if we didn't switch an agency's over here and y'all been having a hard time, but. We, we can do that. We can switch it over in the VLOOKUP and it's not a big deal. Just let us know. Yeah, you should have, I mean, you should have, because I think the agency that asked us that, they they um, they have already submitted one, so they should already have uh, a package that's been switched over. So you would just yeah. use that, yeah. right, for going forward for the yeah. same one. And maybe um, the question is more like, you know, once we do our restatement thing and we send it back out, if you if if it was in if it was a V lookup and we had already changed it, then when we were you're gonna get the same file back. We're just gonna make some adjustments to it. So it shouldn't change. Or you, you know what I'm saying, I guess. Um so um does the ASO3 depreciation tab information apply to the presidio also? Oh, uh, but I don't know why they would be any different. Because well, Presidio, they they weren't part of um, implementation, so it would. I mean, those are all just three or five years. Oh, maybe okay. They are some that are three years, but then the default useful life is five. Hmm. You remember the rule for that, Catherine? It's the shorter of the least useful life, or. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. I was reading a question that just popped up. Can you repeat that again? So what's the rule for gas the, the length of the lease is the shorter of the useful life or forget. Uh, the useful life or the, um, the, the purchase, like the life per the contract. So it would be three years because that's how long the contract is. Yeah. So the, the useful life is just kind of a standard, just accounting nonsense. And then the, whatever the life is for the asset, mm -hmm. the actual, actual life. So, um, y'all did not create the asset. I don't understand that the asset, um, I don't know of any Presidio leases that were part of the implementation and the asset uploads that Sherry did. Um, I, um, I can't say that right off, but I, I don't think so. But the assets that we created with implementation, I mean, you didn't met, you didn't literally create them, but if they were created off of a spreadsheet that you know that we all worked on together. And so that spreadsheet, the implementation file from last year, they there was some columns in there that you know said how many months are left or how much time is left on this lease. And that was your useful life. And that was what was, was um, added to the asset via that upload. 
Okay, and then about these lease reconciliations were only to be completed quarterly. I don't know how much muscle I have to say something or to require y'all to do something monthly or quarterly. And at first I thought monthly was asking a little bit too much until I've been working on agencies. Like, I mean, if it was me, I would do it monthly. I, I mean, I don't, you're not really required. You're only required to send it to us free year end package. I'm sure we'll have that due again um, next May 31st. And, um, you know, the, the, you know, July 22nd, the September, but it is. I've found that it's easier to catch mistakes or like make sure everything's tracking properly if I do it monthly versus a long period of time. I, if that I, helps anybody. Yeah, I, I, I think that. I think what really it's it's really just an accounting it's it's an accounting change and I mean at, at initially Gasby eighty seven was viewed as the CG coming in and telling agencies you've got to do this but it, it really isn't it is it is something that accounting it is it is just a new accounting change um, in how you're handling stuff so it really has to be viewed as a new procedure that is um, your accounting department is responsible for and is responsible for reconciling. So um, I understand the question is, you know, why you're asking that, um, but it's, it's not us telling you you have to do something. You know, all we're doing is attempting to get the year-end financial statements right, um, but what really needs to happen to get that right is, is y'all at the agency level have to be um, sort of organically taking hold of this and understanding that this is, this just, it, it, it's, it's how it is, um, yeah. unfortunately. And it, it's yeah. how it is going forward forever and ever and ever. And yeah. it's, it's complicated. But it's not that complicated. I mean, it's all spelled out here. Just put an X in the box. <laughs> well, and that's true. But, and, it's like and, Lisa said, if you do yeah. it monthly, it's it's yeah. easy to catch. Yeah, and, um, and there's just no way to report this and to do this without having it to this level, which is insane, but it is what it is. Let's see. Uh, let me show you what this agency did. I hope HHS doesn't mind, but um, Christina is a rock star, and I have used what she did here with other agencies Another big one that I don't know that we could have figured it out if we had not done it like this. But um, if it was me and and whoever, I I would I would copy this and you know just let me just move and copy and create a brand new workbook, and I would just give this to the AP staff or however your it works for your agency and say when you make this payment, put an X in that box, and, you know S in column Q here. And then um, I know most agencies, I mean, have less than five or 10 um, leases, but if you have more or if you like all your information to be in one place, I'm happy to help you set your worksheet up like this. But this agency, she's identified that here's the PO number and here's um, the, the PO number um, related to that one lease and the documents is posted against it. So it's just really easy to keep track of it. And I really should have opened another one. Well, I can just, that, I mean, I've done um, some lookups between this, you know, I, I don't know, let's see for it open. But, you know, some of these, these expense tabs, there are 3,000 lines here, but to just figure out how to, you know, narrow it down and until I've identified every pay or you know whoever's identified every payment but I have lookups to say for that for this document number I did a lookup to the payment schedule that's saying that this is paying for that lease and the payment number two so I know that when I go in here that I should be able to to sort this or filter it for lease and whatever's not identified here I need to figure it out, but this one's reconciled. So, but um, it just ties like one to the other, you know, it's formula based. So at the end of this month, this agency can just drop in period 12 
And if people have been putting in that document number all along, then it's really just going to update itself. It, we have to go back and put the X's in for it to really show into the reconciliation. But that, that has been a lifesaver is to add this, this information in here to the, the, the documents. Sorry. It's one more validation to make sure that the information is correct in there. Yeah. That's true. For accounting people, it's a trust but verify. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, some agencies, like there was one yesterday, they, they, there's been journal entries done midway through. So now it's like what's been corrected and what hasn't. You know, that's really the reason for this yes, no in column R is so, you know, I know that it was correct through all these yeses. So then that way I can figure out which of the new payments was not posted correctly and to know what the journal entry is because you know this is only giving it to you at a high level you have to figure out the exact document to know what the um the journal entry is going to be and then too if you have um you know if it was corrected by a je then have the je number there or, you know make a note yeah because it gets hard when there's a lot. Also, it may, it, having that information somewhere close by would also be helpful because if for some reason an auditor does come back and ask you why something isn't the way that it should be, you have it on hand quickly to be able to answer the question. Yes. And I was working on an agencies yesterday and, you know, I'm over here scratching my head because when I'm figuring this out, I go to the expense tab and I look for the ones that haven't been, um, you know, identified. And then I'll have to go to um, an FBO3 or an MIR4 and skis and then look at the attachment and figure out which of these machines it was applied to. But then, so but then there was journal entries done, and I'm like, golly, this is going to be really hard to figure out, you know, what's been corrected and what hasn't, because, you know, I mean, if, if the journal entry was posted in, in February, was it for payments for months one through seven, or was it payments posted months one through seven? So, you know, that's a, a whole nother head scratcher there. You're going to have to figure out created on dates or something like that to get to it. And so I was like, well, do you have the information behind these journal entries, because I noticed when I was looking up some of your documents that there was like a note on the attachments that it was journal entry, whatever was um, for that payment. So then they send me files for each of the journal entries and on there's like four pages there. And so there's um, the PO number, the, the lease ID, the um, documents is posted against it so far, the journal entry, the amortization schedule. And I'm like, I just spent 30 minutes trying to identify those six documents. And I mean, the information, y'all had the information there, you know, like y'all know this stuff better than I do. And I, you know, and it's, I mean, it's, you keep this for your benefit for many reasons. So here's a place to keep it. Another soapbox. <laughs> Do we go back to the no items and change to yes when we J is complete? Yes, I would. Because then that way, the next month, if it's out, then you're like, which ones have been corrected and which one hasn't? But it's totally up to you um, to do that. You know, that column, I mean, I, I'm not looking at the yes, no column unless I'm having to help reconcile your document. But um, for the most part, Sometimes, oh, I'm not going to finish that sentence. I've got a loud, something loud in the background. No problem. Um, I'm open to ideas with this. Um, we're still figuring it out. We're still learning it. When um, I was combining these spreadsheets the other day, 
I realized that I didn't put the um, agency code on this one. So I need to go back and add that to all of them. I, I mean, so if there's something that you think should be changed um, that would benefit everybody, then please reach out. Something that could be added. Um, I have started editing a couple of things. I have been put in the business area there. So when I, we can run a macro that will look at all 76 files and it will put all of the, it'll look in the at file and it will give, the, take that lease roll forward or the expenditure or whatever you set it up to do. And it will combine all of the least expenditure or the expenditure reconciliation tabs into one note workbook. And then it'll rename all those workbooks based on, you know, whatever. But anyway, and then, but if I don't have the business area on each of those tabs, then I don't know who they belong to. So, so quick question, just to recap on something that you mentioned earlier. So if we have, I was the one that had sent you the question about the not least part. Okay. And, um, I was wondering because we have three new assets that are listed and I've added them to the BW asset listing. The asset numbers and everything are in there. Where okay. did you mention that if I'm, if I put the asset number that it should pull in if it's leased or not? If, um, weren't those three assets just regular assets and they didn't have, they weren't leased? Right, so that so these wouldn't apply to the situation that I'm asking about. Um, it, um, they are regular assets; they are not leased, so okay. they won't go on this. But for future reference, if we have one and we enter, or if we enter the asset number on the BW asset listing tab, is that where it pulls in? The BW asset listing tab should, if, like you should copy and paste from BW or from that weekly report or that I've been right. sending. So yep. you would just update that whole report. You, you, we don't want to go in there just like keying things in because then it's going to be off and we're not going to know it until it's combined statewide and we have reconciliation and you know that that's tough. But you, so all of your assets are listed here. I mean, like for the whole agency because there's no way to run a report that's just going to give us your leased assets. So what we had right. to do was just dump all the assets in there, leased or not, you know, 99.9% .9 of the assets that reported in here are not relevant to the package. But the easiest way to do it was just to drop them all in there. But it should only be, an asset number should only be added to the lease, or to the payment schedule if there's a corresponding lease to go with it. Okay. And that would be in that column over here with my fast scrolling. And that's there. Lisa, this might be a good time to note that um, I um, just worked on a video presentation a tutorial for the new um, Bob J reports that are being distributed to the agencies. And in that mm -hmm. report, I am um, towards the end um, probably around the seven minute mark, uh, talk about um, making sure that you add, if you have on your asset schedule, you have like you add a new asset on your asset schedule, mm -hmm. but you haven't updated your payment schedule for that, how to add that asset number um, and, and putting it in column U, dropping that new asset number so that it picks up on your BW asset listing. And can, Kelly, can you go switch to the BW asset listing real quick? Okay, and can you scroll up and find one that says not leased? Okay, so let's just say when you paste in your asset schedule um, in columns B onward, if you had one that ended in like a 1509, and it, so we know it's a leased leased equipment so it's 1509 it's leased equipment but it wasn't on your payment schedule yet it would come in as not leased because it doesn't the asset number is not on your payment schedule yet so it's when right. it looks up it would say not leased it just automatically returns not leased 
So I, I show that on the schedule. And then I would say, I, I show you how to drop in your asset number on to your payment schedule. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, kind of, it basically kind of like that. Just making sure that I knew where to add it so that in the future when we do have one that is a leased asset and it's new, yes. I can make sure that that formula is pulling the correct information. Yes, and, and so I cover that. Now, what I don't cover on that is I don't cover how to add the full payment schedule information onto the payment schedule. I just record how to add the asset number onto the payment schedule. And I, 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 there are other videos, presentations on our website, how to do the lease calculator and then add the lease calculator payment schedule mm -hmm. information, you know, that the, the principal and interest onto the payment was, schedule. Yeah, I think I have that part. I, mm -hmm. It was more just making sure I knew what, how they interrelate. Up. Well, yeah. 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 Okay. I have, um, there's another question. Um, AP clerks won't be able to work with an um, complicated Excel workbook. Would it be possible to create a checklist or listing that they could use to check off payments as they process them? That's an agency procedure. Um, that's up to you guys. Like I, I I would probably start with, you know, take this payment schedule, make it a new workbook, take, I don't know, take the, some of the formulas out, you know, hide, delete the columns that they don't need to see. I mean, you know, hindsight 2020 thing, I probably would have put all this on a different tab late, you know, maybe that would be possible, but, you know, just hide what they don't need to see. But, um, and then just make it a simple, make it a simple spreadsheet. You know, maybe I, when I get these, I've, I've been trying to, um, or, you know, when we were creating them from the beginning, you know, it's whatever you can do to make it simple. Like I filter it for fiscal year 22 and then make the font red. So then that way it's easy to see that I'm picking up, you know, the right line. Like, I don't want to pick up the February payment of 23. But I would just save as, take out what they don't need and, you know, just try to make it simple. You know, I think the neater you have it, the, the easier it is to read, you know, make, you know, lines between them. So it's easy to identify, you know, the difference, this lease and this lease and this lease. Um, some agencies are still don't have these um, the start and end dates on here. I, mean, I haven't been looking at them too much. Um, you know, we can only do so much at a time, but I know the auditors will. I mean, there we, we met with our state and external auditors on Monday, and they were very interested in how the 87 implementation was going and, um, you know, what, you know, what challenges we've had what the um, amount of leases that um, that we had, you know, in total. Can't remember what else they brought up, but it was- It was late. Just, huh? Oh yeah, the late agencies that haven't submitted. So there's gonna be some findings out there. <laughs> and it, it is what it is, um, but the, once this is set up and once this is reconciled, it should not be that hard to maintain. And I mean, it's not that many. I mean, for the most part, there's not that many leases. I mean, most um, agencies have very few. So you can see here, I mean, ones, twos, three, nine, uh, 73, 42, 106, those, those are kind of big numbers. But once you get it rolling and just staying on top of it. Those yeah. agencies monthly, I would even do it weekly. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I would, especially yeah. considering your, how close we are getting to year end and considering the, the auditor interest in this, I would be very serious about GASB 87 and making sure going into year end, I mean, you, you really only have a month um, 
let, I mean, I guess, yes, you, you have exactly a month. Um, so I would be on top of this. I hope everybody's okay out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, um, can y'all think of anything else? Y'all have any, have y'all found anything that's been helpful for y'all out there? They're um, re reverse documents. Um, I know that's kind of a pain because especially when the agencies that have a lot, but, but when a document is, um, rejected by our office then there it shows up as you know it's the reverse document whatever so you have the the negative number the net the um let's see i'm sure one of these has like it's easy to identify the one that was revert or the the reversal but well, that's actually is that a journal entry anyway but um the only way that we could figure out before was how to identify the other document. So, you know, if there's a reverse one, if there's a negative document and there's a positive one that, you know, cancels it out. So that's where we've, um, again, Christina taught me how to um, look up the MIR4 to that's where you can get whether it's been um, reversed or not. And then it also gives you the PO that's related to that payment. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, but so I asked skis where, if they were familiar with a report that did not include reversed um, documents. And uh, they just came back, I think it was last week or two, and there's the FI vendor actual report. And of course it's not perfect because the FI vendor actual is not gonna bring in your journal entries and maybe other things, I'm not really sure, but, um, but, um, um, Sorry, I was looking at the chat. But anyway, so, you know, it's you, you, all of this is figuring things out to me. You know, it's just scratching your head. It's a puzzle and all this. But anyway, so if you want to figure out what your what documents are reversed, you're going to have to run your expense report. Um, you're going to have to run your expense report, run that FI vendor actuals, and then compare the two reports to see which documents are not included on one and they are on the other. I mean, if there's like one offs and that kind of thing, but, um, you know, like the journal entries are not going to be there. And um, you guys are probably more familiar with that part than I am. But that is one way to help identify reverse documents. Yes. Well, actually, um, the it would probably be best to start sending questions to the CAFR ACK for inbox. And if you guys think about it, put your agency code first. That makes it a whole lot easier. I can, I probably know most of them at this point, but um, it's just a lot quicker to like look up things. But um, the CAFR inbox is your best bet. I'm going to be on vacation for a week and a half starting next Wednesday. And I know that's the a year end and everything too. So definitely um, contact the Act for Inbox. Um, at, you know, I say just go going forward, copy me on it too. It doesn't matter. But um, Definitely starting um, next Wednesday. And we're um, on the weekly um, distribution email. We're going to try and um, change the language on that uh -huh. so that it includes things that we are keeping you updated for. Kelly, do you want to pick that one up? Um, or do you um, want me to keep going? <laughs> well, I think we we just said that we'll just on the um, on this email that we're sending out with the reports, um, we can just add a note section. Now, I don't know, helpful hints or something, that we, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So pay so pay attention to that. Just similarly with that, I did with Gasby ninety six. That every every time I send a communication out, um, I tried to make sure that that communication had something that was poignant to um, the, the, the filing. Um, so it's, it should not be wrote. Um, so just pay attention to what's coming into your inbox every week um, because I think it will be helpful for your year in filing. Um, I, I was thinking I could update a, a reporting package for you guys, but know that um, that's, 
don't know. What do you think, Catherine? Um, what, what were you planning on doing? Were you planning on just copying and pasting these things in? Yep. Okay, I, I've done that in the, um, to the video tutorial, which mm -hmm. uh, we should be able to post later today on our website. Okay. Well, I can just go over this real quick that, you know, the first rent, lease and rent expense that goes in the BW expense report tab. Um, I have it set up and, and um, like every way possible, kind of. But, you know, this is just by month down here and you can see that, you know, whatever by month. So, uh, there's a summary by GL. If you just want to update your expenditures from start to finish every time you reconcile, then use this one. Or if you're doing a weekly, monthly or whatever, it's just every different way that you'd like. I mean, that you could do it here or just, but it's all the same information. It's just sorted differently. Um, the next asset history is the same thing. Um, you may have more lines than what you've run in, in the past because some agencies have, uh, for them, I don't know, there's some low value. And before when we've run the capital asset report, we don't usually look at low value because we don't, those are expensed in the act for, and we don't deal with it on the closing package side, but some of these leased assets are low value. So again, we just dumping everything in there so that Excel can do the work and you don't have to pick and choose five assets out of 5,000. This, um, the lease and rent expense by document number. This is from for one of those, I think it's a purple tab, like one of those like optional tabs. It's, it's oh, I'll put it back over here. So it's saying, um, I took out GL account from display, but I also put a filter on it. So it's only looking at least GLs. So then that way, you know, this Pollock invoice here, there was probably three lines on it. You know, the base, uh, the principal interest and the contingent. Well, for this purpose, we only want to look at the base. I keep saying that the um, principal and interest or the, um, you know, the lease expense and comparing it to the payment schedule. So we don't want to see the uh, contingent because it would throw off our total, but let's see. And I'm not sure that it's on this one. Um, Let's see if it's on the HHA. Oh, this, oh, they did. Ah, I know I did it on N120. Pretty sure, at least. Um. Of course, this one's the little, no, this one's good. So anyway, um, so this RICO payment here, well, there's some reverse documents. But anyway, um, it's looking to see if there is a lease ID or a, a, a lease payment on the payment schedule for that exact amount. And it's bringing in the lease ID, I'm pointing at my screen, I guess you can see it, but anyway, um, so, for that payment amount, there is a lease on the payment schedule. Now it's it's just helpful and but it's you know not perfect because if you had two lease, two different leases that had the same exact payment, you would see the same thing. But anyway, so this is just a helpful to kind of identify by the by the document number, the lease ID. And then you'll see that some people have asked me about it on the um, expense report that this column here is um, blank or it has the NAs. And of course there's, well, there we go. So that if is looking at the um, VW expense report document tab and saying for that um, document number is related to this lease. Anyway, that's what that third report is for. It's helpful if you have a lot of leases, but you know it's definitely not required. So we just got a question about the Act for Inbox. 
um, it the ACFR inbox is ACFR, A C F R at cg.sc.gov. Um, if you do accidentally send it to the old inbox, which was CAFR at cg.sc.gov, it will reroute. So you don't need to panic. Um, we are trying to, um, you know, move ourselves towards the new naming convention. It's very hard, but um, <laughs> we're trying. Yeah, and it still says act for, I mean, um, CAFR. And I think we're, we, we're probably going to leave it that way for a little while and, and until act for becomes a little more common. Yeah. Either way, you'll be fine. Yeah. Somebody just sent me an email that says, I think I may have the old version of, ex, of ex, the file. I'm having issues with the BW expense report doc tab not pulling in the lease ID correctly. That may be a data text to columns issue. Yeah, it could be that. And then like I've had people, and I was thinking this is what the question was, if people are saying, you know, I've updated the BW expense report GL for new payments, but the lease ID, um, column isn't updating. Well, it's not going to update for new payments if you didn't also update the BW expense report doc list. And this one's a little wonky, you know, of course, but um, before we had the updated BW report, we just had to make do with the FM expense report to be able to develop this package. So. And I think that was the one that expenses are reported as negative numbers instead of positive numbers. So then maybe just ignore this. <laughs> oh. Any other questions? got a question about the 722 date versus the 99 date the um 72 versus the um none so the 72 um your package should be completely reconciled it's 722 or july 22 on perp july 22nd of 22 just to make sure that we were all clear on that one but um, that's the last day to do a journal entry. So um, this one has to be on time and it has to be reconciled. Um, so that, that way we have the expense side right and the assets right. So that, that so the, everything should be reconciled. Everything should be correct um, for the July 22nd. And then the September 9th is just to update the BW asset listing tab after the final depreciation is posted from skis. And I will, um, we'll, we can send out a publication after the day after the, public, the, the depreciation is posted. So you'll know exactly when that is, you know, and if it's in, you know, later August, then you can go ahead and submit it. So hopefully we'll have them in well before the September 9th, as long as depreciation is posted well before September 9th. And Kelly, that's what you were talking about earlier, where your beginning balances will have changed from the package you submitted from yeah. July 22nd. Really nothing should change except for the asset report and okay. just for depreciation. If there is a change, if there's any change at all, y'all have new leases or something like that, reach out to us and let us know, you know? Um, and so the sooner we can figure things out, the better. And um, also with such a large crowd here, it's a good time, not related to leases, but you know, it's brought up um, in every you know, meeting that we have with auditors and with uh, Mr. Ekstrom and stuff is um, what holds us up. And one thing it's, it's, it's a kind of a big deal each year is a subsequent events package. If you have a large payable or, you know, just something that's, you know, big material or you know whatever 
that comes up before, you know, it, let's just say it's AP and that package is due, I'm making up the date, but September 1st. And on September 9th, you discover something, well, then just let us know, you know, at least ask us and make us aware of it. And if it's a big enough number, then maybe we would want to go ahead and enter that into um, skis at, you know, in our work papers and everything. And then that's going to help us out at the end of the year, because we don't want to wait till subsequent events, you know, in a perfect world, that would only be like your really one offs and, you know, small amounts, because we only have to do an entry if it's material. And then when we were talking like two days before is due to the um, auditors and it's manual update. So just like, you know, reach out if you have questions. If you think something might be, you know, something that you're going to have to put on subsequent events, that's, you know, just notable. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that, Kelly, because <laughs> um, that's one thing that the auditors are going to start looking at because a lot of people view all their reporting packages leading up to the subsequent events reporting package as, well, we'll get it on the, the, by the end of it all. And that's really not good. And the auditors are going to start looking at document dates and comparing it to when the original packages were due. But again, it will help your uh, cause quite a bit. If fine, if you miss something, but you let us know earlier on, that is a huge help other than us having to scramble at the last minute, putting multi-million dollar adjustments in the state's financials two days before we got to give the whole document over to the auditors. So thank you for that, Kelly. That's a very important thing. Yeah. No, we're ready to not make changes at that point because yeah, it's manual and, you know, page 50 has to match page, you reconcile to page, you know, 141 and 276. So that is, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's big. And somebody asked you what version of Excel do we need um, for the X lookup is, our, and that's, that is the new formula that's, that's, you know, causing that issue. But, um, and it's pretty awesome. If you don't know it, then check it out. But um, Microsoft Office 365. And we are managed by DTO, I'm pretty sure, and um, we have it, so it should be available. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. That's a bit of <laughs> maybe. What was that that you're laughing about? <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> Kim Lancaster said that Sabetta. That DTO manages our whatever, but I don't oh, know yeah. that exact thing. I don't know if Microsoft <laughs> I mean, Office 365 is a better yeah. or not, but you know, it's in that world at least, right? <sighs> oh, I think I reached, I don't, I don't know how to use this chat. Anything else? Well, I guess we'll end it. Um, it's been nice talking to everybody a lot more than we normally talk, and especially this time of year for the last four months or whatever. But I appreciate everything y'all done and, and coming here and um, and uh, participating in this and. Um, and getting these packages in on time. Um, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Y'all have Thank a good you. day. Bye, Kelly. Have, have a good day. day. Thank you.